Well, good morning. Good morning. Please rise as we sing our opening hymn, Glory and Praise to Our God. Praise to our God, who alone gives light to our days. Many are the blessings He bears to those who trust in His ways. We, the daughters and sons of Him, who builds the valleys and plains, praise the wonders our God has done in every heart that sings. Glory and praise to our God, who alone gives light to our days. Many are the blessings He bears to those who trust in His ways. In His wisdom He strengthens us like gold that's tested in fire. Though the power of sin prevails, our God is here to save. Glory and praise to our God, who alone gives light to our days. Many are the blessings He bears to those who trust in His ways. Every moment of every day, our God is ready to save. Always ready to seek the lost, to answer those who pray. Glory and praise to our God, who alone gives light to our days. Many are the blessings He bears to those who trust in His ways. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. Mark's Episcopal Church on this third Sunday after Easter. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest heaven. Glory to God, glory to God, peace to his people, God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest heaven. Glory to God, glory to God, peace to God's people, God's people on earth. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. Glory 
to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest heaven, glory to God, glory to God, peace to God's people, God's people on earth. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory, the glory, the glory of God the Father. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest heaven. Glory to God, glory to God. Peace to God's people, God's people on earth. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest heaven. Glory to God, glory to God. Peace to God's people, God's people on earth. Lord be with you. Also with you. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to the disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his reckoning works, redeeming works, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of Holy Scripture. Our first reading is from the book of Acts. Peter addressed the people. You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as, those by, as though by your own power or piety we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life, whose God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know, and the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance and did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Repeat with me, if you will, Psalm 4 by half verse. Answer me when I call, O God, defender of my cause. You set me free when I am hard-pressed. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. You mortals, how long will you dishonor my glory? How long will you worship dumb idols and run after false gods? Know that the Lord does wonders for the faithful. When I call upon the Lord, he will hear me. Tremble, then, and do not sin. Speak to your heart in silence upon your bed. Offer the appropriate sacrifices. And put your trust in the Lord. Many are saying, oh, that we might see better times. Lift up the light of your countenance upon us, O Lord. You have put gladness in my heart. More than when grain and wine and oil increase. 
I lie down in peace. At once I fall asleep. For only you, Lord, make me dwell in safety. The epistle comes from 1 John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What will we be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this, when he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is, and all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Father, we praise you as Lord. All of the earth gives you worship, for your majesty fills the heaven, fills the earth. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. According to Luke, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus stood among the disciples and said to them, Am I? I'm not on. I'll try that again. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and at my feet. See, it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet while in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses to these things. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. 
Hallelujah. Can you believe that Easter was already two weeks ago? The sanctuary was filled with the perfume of lilies, and there's still some lilies around. They might not be quite as uh, perfumey. But if any of you have some of these lilies that you ordered, you are warmly invited to take them home. Families and visitors were all dressed up in their Easter bonnets and whatnot for the Easter celebration. And now we find ourselves firmly in what is called Easter Tide. It's that time, it's that 50 days after Easter Sunday, that time before Pentecost. This is the time we're reminded through the readings uh, of this season of Jesus' post-resurrection visits to the disciples. We may also be reminded of our own questioning and disbelief and search to find some kind of a ra rational meaning to this mystery called resurrection. Disbelief is not unbelief. Disbelief invites curiosity. It invites conversation, opinions, questioning. It invites searching. It meant the disciples were not doubting, but they do not yet have faith, faith that will be given to them. Whereas unbelief means rejection of and in this case, Jesus' resurrection, despite what might have been seen or understood, simply not believed. Last week, we revisited Thomas, the twin, whose story always comes immediately after Easter. Thomas declared he would not believe that Jesus visited the disciples in the upper room and said, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the side, I will not believe. And I think that we all have a bit of Thomas in us from time to time, where we doubt, where we want proof, where we want hard evidence, where we want that rational explanation that Jesus is the Christ. Jesus was born, crucified, died, buried, and resurrected. And we want proof. What Thomas had and what we have from time to time is not faith. Faith is given to us from God through the Holy Spirit. And attempting to even start to unravel that is a very difficult mystery, and we're not going to be delving into that today. Jesus explained to the disciples once again that what he had told them when he was still with them, he reminded them about everything which had been written about him in the Law of Moses, the Prophets, and the Psalms. He said they must be fulfilled. They did not understand his words until he opened their minds to understand the Scripture. He opened their minds to understand. He gave them faith. We, too, are invited into this faith. This faith is trust. If we've been baptized, we have been marked as Christ's own forever. We are marked with the Holy Spirit. And we are invited into shalom. We are invited into peace. Last week, when Jesus came to the upper room, it was locked. And he stood amongst his disciples and said, Peace be with you. In that same scripture, we had the scene a week later where Jesus once again st stood among the disciples. Thomas was with them at that time, but he hadn't believed what the disciples had told him, that Jesus had appeared to them in the upper room. So Jesus came once again, and there Thomas was. And he invited Thomas to place his fingers in his side and look at his hands and feet to observe the marks of crucifixion of the cross. Thomas declares, my Lord and my God, peace be with you. Shalom. Shalom means so much more than simply peace. It means restor res restoration. It, can be made, it means to be made whole, to make full restitution. Shalom embodies what it means 
being in good relationship with God. And this is a gift from God. Jesus says, peace be with you. He says, shalom, let us make this relationship whole, forgiven, restored. This is the embodiment of well-being. In shalom, all is well, all is complete, all is right. We are in right relationship with God. And that's God's hope and love for us. Today we heard once again of Jesus returning to the disciples. He came amongst them and immediately said to them, Peace be with you. There's a theme here, peace be with you. I hope you've noticed that. Well, they were startled and they were terrified. They thought they were seeing a ghost. So Jesus does what Jesus does. He asks questions. Then he wants to have something to eat. He asked if a ghost has flesh and bones, and then he asked them to look and to touch him. And in their joy, they were disbelieving. They were questioning. They were trying to find a rational explanation for Jesus coming amongst them. They did not doubt, but their faith had wavered. Again, he invited them to look at his hands and his feet and immediately asks for something to eat. He's hungry. Like the Last Supper, like the feeding of the 5,000, the feeding of the 4,000, Jesus took bread and fish. He gave thanks, broke the bread, and gave. We are once again reminded that Christ is fully present in the taking, giving thanks, breaking, and eating of the bread. Every time we come to this Eucharistic table, we remember Jesus' crucifixion, death, and most importantly, Jesus' resurrection. We remember the scarcity of Good Friday. We remember what that feels like to be without Christ. It's a desolate feeling. And we live through those three days waiting for Easter, at Eucharist, we celebrate the abundance in Christ. The disciples were devastated that the Jesus they so yearned for, the Messiah they so yearned for, a warrior Messiah, whom they hoped would deliver them from the oppression and despair, they were now confronted with the risen Christ, still disbelieving in their joy still trying to puzzle out, what did this all mean? Just like us. We live in a world broken in sin, a world of deep divides where unfairness, fear, and simply not having the answers to all the problems we face in this life. And it's easy to fall prey to the idea of scarcity, of being without Christ, to feel like the burden on our shoulders are simply too much. Instead of our glass only being half empty or half full, we might not even believe that we have a glass to fill. That's despair. And Jesus reminds us every day and every time we celebrate the Eucharist feast that we remember that it is God who is steadfast in abundance. It is God who loves us so much that he forgives our disbelief. And it is God who loves us so much that God only wants us to live into the abundance which God has blessed us with his Son. Jesus Christ made himself known to the disciples in the breaking of the bread. He offers himself being known to us in his greeting of shalom, peace be with you. And every time we celebrate the abundance of being together in the breaking of bread in the Eucharistic feast, he is with us. So let us pray that God will continue to open the eyes of our faith, that we may behold him in all the redeeming works that he does, and this we ask in Jesus' name. 
So let us with joy and gladness rejoice. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. <clears throat> Let us continue the words of our faith in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. He is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My turn. The prayers of the people are Form 6. In peace we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone, for this community, the nation, and the world, for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace, for the just and proper use of your creation, for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression, for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Michael Curry, our presiding bishop, Betsy Minot, our bishop, our rector, Reverend Chris, and for all other bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in his church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. We pray for our outreach ministries provided through UDMO and for the St. Mark's households of Tom and Susan Knapp and Vicki and Dale Krug, that their homes may be places of peace and grace. We also remember Mary Chumlin, Don Ely, and Abby Stanick, who celebrated birthdays this past week. Remember, we remember Ethan Troutwine and Troy Seba, who are celebrating birthdays this week. We remember Art and Anna Bacon, who are celebrating their anniversary this week. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, 
that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. O Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. During this joyful season of Easter, confession of sin is omitted in the order of worship to emphasize the celebration of redemption and new life that are characteristic of the Easter season. We know that our old self was crucified with Christ so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. So you must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Shalom. Shalom. Can you do a count for me? Sure. Thank you. We only have a couple of announcements today. Um, last month, we erroneously said that the Change for Change was going to Baca. I think it went to Lotus instead. We had our, we were messed up. So I think it went to the right place last month. This month is to Baca, and it's um, it's something against what what is it? Biker's thank Baca. Thank you, Bikers against. Um, child abuse. They're a great cause and they do a lot of good. Um, church cleanup is next Sunday, April 21st, after the church service, and there will be pizza for lunch. Please bring your rakes and gardening gloves or what have you, and I don't think it'll take long. We can get that done right quick. Um, I will be leaving almost immediately after the service today. Um, um, I've been invited to do the dedication of the church windows in Webster City at Church of the Savior. Their, their priest is down uh, at Happening for the weekend, and so they invited me to do that. So I'll be doing that. And you all are invited as well to come over to Church of the Savior to celebrate the new windows. Good Shepherd. Good Shepherd. What? For crying out loud, you'll end up in, <laughs> in Claremont which is the other side of the state. Church of the Good Shepherd, thank you so much. Honestly, are there any other announcements other than the lilies? Don't forget your lily. Take a lily. Please. Please take a lily. Offer to God a sacrifice. Make good your vows to the Most High. Please join us in our next hymn, Christ is Alive. Touched on by human pains, but 
From thine own have we given thee. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father, almighty creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sins of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of the universe and giver of life. You formed us in your own image and called us to dwell in your infinite love. You gave the world into our care that we might be your faithful stewards and show forth your bountiful grace. But we fail to honor your image in one another and in ourselves. We would not see the goodness in the world around us, so we violated your creation, abused one another, and rejected your love. Yet you never cease to care for us and prepared the way of salvation for all people. Through Abraham and Sarah, you called us into covenant with you. You delivered us from slavery, sustained us in the wilderness, and raised up prophets to renew your promise of salvation. Then, in the fullness of time, 
you sent your eternal word, made mortal flesh in Jesus. Born into the human family and dwelling among us, he revealed your glory, giving himself freely to death on the cross. He triumphed over evil, opening the way of freedom and life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you do it, whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ Christ has died. Christ Christ is risen. Christ Christ will come come again. Remembering his death and resurrection, we now present to you from your creation this bread and this wine. By your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring us into everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons, that with St. Mark and all your saints, past, present, and yet to come, may praise your name forever. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. 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 And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Oops. We now pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us, save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace When fears are still, when 
striving seas, my comforter, my all in all. Here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless babe, this gift of love and righteousness Scorned by the ones he came to save Till on that cross as Jesus died The wrath of God was satisfied For every sin on him was laid here in the death of Christ I live. There in the ground his body lay, light of the world by darkness slain. Then bursting forth in glorious day, up from the grave he rose again and as he stands in victory sin's curse was lost its grip on me for i am his and he is mine Bought with the precious blood of Christ. No guilt in life, no fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath. Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ I'll stand. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ I'll stand. Here in the power of Christ I'll stand. Let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of life and salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Grant, Almighty God, that your people may recognize their weakness and put their whole trust in your strength, so that they may rejoice forever in the protection of your loving providence through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And may God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you now and forever. Please rise as we sing our closing hymn, I Sing the Almighty Power of God.
I sing the almighty power of God that made the mountains rise, that spread the flowing seas abroad and filled the lofty skies. I sing the wisdom that ordained the sun to rule the day. Moon shines full at his command, and all the stars obey. I sing the goodness of the Lord that filled the earth with food. He formed the creatures with his word, and then pronounced them good. Lord, wonders are displayed wherever I turn my eye. If I survey the ground, I tread or gaze upon the sky. There's not a plant or flower below, but makes thy glories known. And clouds arise and tempests blow by order from thy throne. While all that follows life from thee is ever in thy care. And everywhere that I could be, thou God art present without fear. <laughs> live without fear. I'm telling you, live without fear. Your creator has made you holy and has always protected you and loves you like a mother. Go in peace to follow the good road and may God's blessing be with you always. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. There we go. <laughs> yes.